This operations management tutorial is on general approaches to forecasting. There are two broad categories of approaches to forecasting, qualitative and quantitative. Quantitative forecasting is anything that involves equations, so it's mathematical. Any other approach is a qualitative approach. Qualitative approaches include subjective, judgmental, and non-mathematical methods. There are three broad types of forecasts, judgmental, that's basically the qualitative approaches, and we'll look at those in a moment. Their time series, which use historical data where we're assuming that the past continues into the future. That's basically what we talked about in the black and the windshield story. And associative models. These use one or more explainer variables to predict the future. For example, you might try to predict future carpet sales at a carpet store based on the number of new houses that are started. Now let's briefly look at a few qualitative approaches to forecasting. There is executive opinion, where you ask the executives at the company how many they think you're going to sell. There's sales force opinion. In order to be a salesperson, you have to be pretty optimistic. So if you use this approach, I would add up all the numbers and I'd divide by two or three. There's consumer surveys, also known as test marketing. This is basically when you ask consumers how many you think they would buy based on a certain price. This really only works with uh, products that you sell directly to the consumer. If you're selling it to another company, this doesn't work very well. There's outside an opinion. How many does some outside expert think you're going to sell? And there's the Delphi method, named after the Greek oracle at Delphi. This is where you ask experts how many they think you're going to sell. You then share everyone's projection with everybody else. Ask them based on this additional information would, to revise their estimate. You continue doing this until you reach a consensus or there's no further movement. In terms of time frame, there's long range, medium range, and short range, and not all companies do all of these. Also, I'm going to give you some estimates for the time range, but they're different for different companies. Long range forecasts are measured in years. For a typical company, that's one or two or three years. Basically, how far out into the future you need to go in order to add new capacity. However, at Georgia Power, our long range forecast went out 20 years. If you're Intel making chips, going out 20 years would make absolutely no sense at all. Long-range forecasts are used for strategic planning, like we talked about in a prior video. You want to set goals for the company, decide if you want to add new product lines or close existing product lines. You also want to decide if you want to ramp up production by adding new facilities or new shifts, or to close down production by decreasing the number of shifts or facilities. Medium-range forecasts go out for a couple of months. We didn't do these at Georgia Power Company. These are used to make changes in the workforce when that can't be done quickly. They're used to schedule purchases that have longer lead times, and they're used to make significant changes in your inventory level. Small changes can be made in the short range. At most companies, short range forecasts are measured in days or weeks. Georgia Power Hours was five years, but for most companies, days or weeks. These are used for scheduling production, scheduling equipment, which jobs it's going to work on, adjusting cash levels, and scheduling your employees for their next weekly or monthly schedule if you don't have a standing schedule. Now let's talk about the components of demand behavior. First is trend. This is a long-term, usually linear movement in demand. So is demand increasing or is demand decreasing? I say this is usually linear because we usually find the trend component using a linear approach like regression. Seasonality is short-term, regular variations. We'll talk more about this later, but basically you sell more lawnmowers in the summer and less lawnmowers in the winter. Cycles are wave-like variations of more than one year's duration typically four to six years in duration. We'll talk about these later as well. Irregular variations are caused by unusual circumstances. For example, the Olympics coming to town. Random variations are variations caused by chance. Back in 1984, before computers were common, a man named Bernie Smith developed a forecasting technique called naive forecasting. These days, it's not very good. But really what it does is it sets a, uh, a floor. Any technique you use should be better than this. Naive forecasting uses a bunch of simple rules. Demand is going to go up 5% per period. Demand is going to remain constant. Demand is going to go up 10% in the winter and down 5% in the spring. And you may have multiple rules. You check them over time and keep the ones that work well and discard the ones that don't work well. And you may use different rules for different products. Naive forecasting is simple to use. In fact, you can do it by hand or with a hand calculator. There's virtually no cost to using it. It's quick. It's easy. You don't even need a spreadsheet. There's no real data analysis in it. Just look at the sales last period and bump them up by whatever your rule says to bump them up or bump them down if that's the case. The rules are easy to understand. They're easy to calculate. Doesn't give you much in the way of accuracy. 
but like I said, it can be used as a floor. You would expect any other technique to do better. I talk about naive forecasting more as a way to introduce the notation than because it's terribly useful these days. You see three equations on the screen. Let's take a look at them. The first one says f sub t is equal to a sub t minus 1. What that means is the forecast in any time period is equal to the actual in the period before that. So your forecast in time period 10 would equal to your actual in time period 9. So basically you're just saying that demand is equal to last period. But like I said, I'm more worried about the notation, the forecast, the actual, and the t and the t minus 1. The second one is for seasonal variations, although again we're really only interested in the notation. And this is where we have n seasons, so we had quarters n was equal to 4. This says f of t is equal to a of t minus n. So your demand this quarter is equal to your demand four quarters ago. So f of 10 would be equal to a of 10 minus 4 equals 6. The third one, data with trends, has a growth factor built in. f of t is equal to a of t minus 1. So basically the forecast this period is equal to the actual last period plus a growth component a of t minus 1 minus a of t minus 2. So how much did it grow over the last two periods? In general, there are seven time series methods. Simple moving averages, weighted moving averages, although we will find out later that simple moving averages are just a special case of weighted moving averages, exponential smoothing, and there are several different types of exponential smoothing. There's simple, trend adjusted, and winter's exponential smoothing. Regression analysis, and there's simple and multiple regression. Box Jenkins, Shenkin Time Series, and Trend Projections. We will discuss four of these categories in more detail, simple moving averages, weighted moving averages, exponential smoothing, and regression analysis. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the other three. These are not typically covered in most introductory textbooks. I just wanted to mention them because I think they're interesting, and there is a possibility that your textbook might mention one or more of these. Box Jenkins is a fairly complex forecasting technique. It's what we use for the long-range forecast at George Power Company. When I was in my PhD program, I took an entire course in Box Jenkins. As you would expect, it requires a skilled analyst, requires a lot of data, but it is by far the most accurate technique out there. Schenken Time Series was developed by Julius Schenkens at the U.S. Census Bureau, and it addresses a common problem in forecasting. If you look at the graph on the screen, it goes up and up, and then it flattens out. From that point, it could go down the red line, or it could go up the blue line. If it goes down, it's called a turning point. If it goes back up again, it's called a saddle point. These turning points are very difficult to spot with most uh, forecasting techniques. Regression in particular does a really poor job of spotting them. That's the advantage of Shinkin time series. It is great at spotting these turning points, but it does need a minimum of three years worth of data. Trend projections try to fit a mathematical equation to the data. You think about a sine wave. There is a mathematical equation that fits that exactly. Once it fits an equation to the data, it can then use that equation to project into the future. Most data sets require extremely complex models to fit them. For this reason, we don't use them in forecasting, at least much. Trend projections are more commonly used in what's called econometric modeling. In the next video, we will look at the four forecasting techniques I mentioned earlier in more detail. I'll put a link to it in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing to this channel.